Can we get a brother to write down the precepts? Let's see. All right. Thank you, Amariah. All praise to the Most High. Appreciate you, sir. All right. Oh, so you ready? Sick. All right. Let's get the book of Job. <clears throat> let's get Job. Let's get Job. All right. Job chapter 1. Start at verse 1. <clears throat> Job 1 and verse 1. This is the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. There was a man in the land of Uz, mm -hmm. whose name was Job. Mm -hmm. And that man was perfect and upright, mm -hmm. and one that feared God and eschewed evil. So a lot of us have something in common with Job. We fear the most high God, and we eschew evil. We get rid of evil. We stay away from evil as well. So it says Job also, he feared the most high God. It says that he eschewed evil. All right? So read on. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Mm -hmm. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels mm -hmm. and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. Mm -hmm. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So he was exalted. He was the greatest of all the men of the East country, right? So let's jump down to verse six. We want to verse six. Come on. Verse six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord mm -hmm. and Satan came also among them. Read that again. Now, what, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, mm -hmm. and Satan came also among them. So it says there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. <laughs> the sons of God is referring to the angels in heaven, all right? It says they came to present themselves before the Lord. It says, and Satan came also among them. Why? Because Satan himself is an angel. You understand? So a lot of times in Christianity, we have this, uh, we've been taught this concept that the Most High Satan had this big fight. You understand? And now Satan is just on the loose, doing what he will, wreaking havoc. And though Satan may be wreaking havoc, he is not on the loose. You understand? He has to present himself before the Lord like everybody else, like all the other angels. You understand? Read 6 again. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. They all got to line up in single file line. You understand? They have to, have to present themselves before the Most High. Come on. And Satan came also among them. And Satan is not exempt. Satan came also among them, read on. Verse 7. So now, with that being said, we have to get rid of the idea, you understand, that uh, Satan is on the loose. Um, the things that we go through in this walk um, are too difficult for us um, and attribute everything that we go through to the fact that Satan is attacking us and um, as if God is helpless, you understand? Satan is on strict assignment, you understand? He is not on the loose. Him and the Most High never had a fight. They never squared up. And uh, Satan almost won. That's madness. That's madness. We're going to deal with that too. Get 2nd Ezra 6. 2nd Ezra 6, we're going to read verse 3. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Before the fair flowers were seen. Before the flowers were seen, come on. Or ever the movable powers were established. Mm -hmm. Before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together. Before the what? innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together so christ been around in the beginning before there was an innumerable multitude of angels so you have to understand there is an innumerable multitude of angels the lord god did not make an innumerable multitude of angels to not be able to control them you understand the lord has an innumerable multitude of angels that's number one the lord god is not a man to do things that he that are beyond his reach or outside of his control you understand um from there get second address eight Second Ezra 8, and then read 21. This is Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Whose throne is inestimable. Inestimable. Excuse me, inestimable. Uh -huh. Whose glory may not be comprehended. The Bible says the most high glory cannot be comprehended. Come on. Before whom the host of angels stand with trembling. Before what? Before whom the host of angels uh -huh. stand with trembling. The Bible says the host of angels that the Lord God created, including Satan, because he's an angel as well, they stand with trembling. None of them buck up against the Most High God. It says they stand with trembling. You understand? They are all in fear of the Most High God, who is glorious, beyond beyond what we can think and comprehend. You understand? From there, get to Rock 42. This we're going to understand, um, understand things a little clearer. Get to Rock 42 and then read verse 23. 
Start at verse 22. Sirach 42 and 22. Sirach chapter 42, verse 22. Uh -huh. Oh, how desirable are all his works, uh -huh. and that a man may see even to a spark. It says, oh, how desirable are all God's works. Read on. All these things live and remain forever. The things for the Most High God created, including the angels, it says they live and remain forever. Come on. For all uses. For all his uses. Come on. And they are all obedient. No, no, no. Satan, he's the only person who's exempt. They are all obedient. And God says they are all obedient. They are all obedient. That's what God says. You want to say it? Read it again. 23. 20, so rock 42, 23. Mm -hmm. All these things live and remain forever. Everything the Lord God created lived and remains. Come on. For all uses. For all God's uses. Come on. And they are all obedient. It says, and they are all obedient. All right. So let's go back to Job. There is not one angel that does what he want to do. You understand? They are all obedient. You know what I'm saying? Meaning they follow order. So let's get some understanding. Let's get Job 1. Now let's read verse 6 again. Job 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Satan came also among them. Why? Because he's also obedient. He's not exempt from God's commandments. Come on. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm -hmm. Whence comest thou? What do you say? Whence comest thou? Read. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, No, Satan ignored the Lord. Then Satan answered the Lord. No, he, br he brushed the Lord off. Then Satan answered the Lord uh -huh. and said, From going to and fro in the earth mm -hmm. and from walking up and down in it. So Satan gave an account. Satan gave an account of what he's been doing. You understand? Know he says, From going to and fro in the earth and up and down in it. He had to give an account to the Most High. Read on. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm -hmm. Hast thou considered my servant Job? What did the Most High say? Has thou considered my servant Job? He said, Has thou considered my servant Job? Read on. Read. That there is none like him in the earth. There is none like him in the earth. Come on. A perfect and upright man, mm -hmm. one that feareth God and escheweth evil. So, before you can even get on the radar, and you understand, on the mind of Satan, who designed the system? The Most High designed the system. You understand? The Most High is, is he who designed the system. Before you can get on Satan's radar in the first place, you understand? It says that uh, Job was an upright man, perfect in the land. You understand? The Most High God had blessed him. And then the Lord said, How, he called Satan, he said, has you considered my servant Job? You understand? You have to ask yourself, has, when, when you're going through things, you have to remember these things, that the Most High God is the one who allows everything. No, the Lord God, God is not uh, trying to make you commit evil. The Lord God is not trying to break you down. But guess what? The Lord God is the one who controls and validates everything. So he asked him, what, read eight. Has thou considered my servant Job, mm -hmm. that there is none like him in the earth, mm -hmm. a perfect and upright man, mm -hmm. one that feareth God and escheweth evil? So let's let's examine the condition of the battle. Let's get to Rock 33. So many times in this truth, we get the, the false conception of a happily ever after in this truth. There is no happily ever after in this truth. You understand? There is no, no cakewalk in this truth. Let's read Sirach 33. Let's read verse 14. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 33, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Good is set against evil. What did it say? Good is set against evil. Read. And life against death. Mm -hmm. So is the godly against the sinner. So is the godly against the sinner. Read. And the sinner against the godly. Now, get Judith. From now, let's get Judith. The Bible has already told us that there is a battle already in place. It says good is set against evil. The Lord God designed it this way. This is the condition of the battle. From now, let's, let's get Judith 8. Judith 8, and we're going to read verse 25. You got it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. This is Judith, the 8th chapter in the 25th verse. Mm -hmm. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It says, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Come on. Which trieth us. What does he do? Which trieth us. It says, God trieth us. It was, it was the Most High God who put Job on the radar in the first place. And asked Satan, has thou considered him? Why? Because he had things in order. You understand? He kept the Lord God's commandments. So he was perfect. He was upright. So now, Most High God asked Satan, have you even considered him? You understand? Because he still has to be tried. You understand? Come on. Even Read. as he did our fathers. The same way the Most High God tried our fathers, the same way the Most High God would try us. But a lot of times we look at the trial as something strange. We think this has happened to nobody besides us. We feel like the whole world is upside down. We, we married Jay Blige now. You understand? Read 25 again. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, mm -hmm. which trieth us. It says he trieth us. Come on. Even as he did our fathers. It says even as he did our fathers. Read on. 
Remember what things he did to Abraham mm -hmm. and how he tried Isaac uh -huh. and what happened to Jacob in Mesopotamia of Syria Re when he kept the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. Mm -hmm. For he hath not tried us in the fire as he did them Re for the examination of their hearts. Why does God put us on the radar so Satan can come and, and test us and try us for the what? For the examination of their hearts. It says it's for the examination of our hearts. You understand? The Lord God has a system in place. It's not the most high God whispering in your ear for you to fornicate, commit adultery, for you to lie, for you to steal. But the Lord has a system in place for the examination of your heart. To see if you really about what you shout. Let's get James 1. James 1. Because it's not the Lord himself. The most high God is too glorious for him to have to tempt anybody. You understand? The most high God is too holy for that. You understand? Let's get James 1 and let's read verse uh, 13 so we can get that clear. This is the book of James, chapter 1, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let no man say when he is tempted, mm -hmm. I am tempted of God. Uh -huh. For God cannot be tempted with evil. You see that? It says, let no man say when he is tempted, oh, God is tempting me. It says, for God cannot be tempted with evil. God has no desire for evil. Come on. Neither tempteth he any man. It says he doesn't tempt any man. The most High God is too glorious for that. He has a whole system in place for that. You understand? He has a whole system in place for that. Now, let's go back. Actually, one more. Let's get Sirach 15. Sirach 15, let's get verse 11. Because Israel, Israel is bad for saying that, man. God is really testing me right now. God, God is really, man, God been tempting me with, the, with this girl that work. God ain't tempting you with no girl that work. Yo, yo, your flesh is lusting. That, that's the problem. You understand? And then you, you, you and Satan, y'all combo babies. You understand? Sirach 15, let's read verse 11. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 11 Come on. say not, excuse me say not thou it is through the lord that i fell away the bible says say not thou it is through the lord that i fell away oh man i left the truth because man god was putting me through stuff i fell away because the most i put me through some stuff i'm celebrating christmas because the most i was most i my mama called me up god had my mama call me up and say she got gifts for me so that that's why i love the truth man because you know every year around christmas season i, I leave the truth read that verse again say not thou it is through the Lord that I fell away. Say not thou, it is through the Lord that I fell away. Read on. For thou oughtest not to do the things that he hated. What did it say? Thou oughtest not to do the things that he hated. It says you oughtest not do the things that he hated. Read on. Say now thou, he have caused me to err. Don't say God made you err. God made you sin. Come on. For he have no need of the sinful man. Read that part again. Say not thou, he hath caused me to err. Mm -hmm. For he has no need of the sinful man. Don't say it was God. Don't blame your iniquity and your error on God. Because it says he has no need of the sinful man or woman. You understand? Let's go back to Job. So now that we understand that there is a system in place, and this thing is in place for what? Our examination. This thing is in place for our examination. All right? So where we at? Read 8. Job 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm -hmm. Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, mm -hmm. a perfect and upright man, uh -huh. one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Mm -hmm. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, mm -hmm. Do Job fear God for naught? It says what? Do Job fear God for naught? You see, a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all, y'all don't even know that y'all be going through a season where everything is going good. Y'all go through a season where the, the spirit is flourishing. Y'all go through a season when y'all feel strong. Y'all go through a season where everything clicks and everything is, is perfect. But y'all must understand. None of us would just be allowed to um to, to just coast through this this present world. It's not happening. We none of us will be allowed to coast through this present world. A lot of y'all, y'all want to coast. You understand? Y'all want to sit in the back of the class. Yeah, y'all want to hide, y'all want y'all want to sink down into y'all desk like back in high school. It's not happening. You're not coasting through this. You're not passing with a C. You understand? Nobody in the kingdom is gonna be a C grade student. It's gonna be all A plus students in the kingdom. You understand why? Because you're going to be tried. You're going to go through tests. You understand? It's for, it's for your examination. Have you been paying attention? Have you been studying? Have you been applying? Are you watching your teachers? Are you watching your teachers and tutors? You understand? Now, read that verse again. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, mm -hmm. Do Job fear God for naught? Does, does Job fear God for naught? Because he coasting through this thing, ain't he? He rich. He got children. He flourishing. He keeping the laws. Everything is, just, everything is just going too good for him. Does he fear God for naught? Come on. Has not thou made an hedge about him? It's easy to serve the Lord. You got a hedge around him. 
a lot of y'all, y'all, y'all perfect and upright when everything is going good. Y'all perfect and upright. A lot of y'all perfect and upright. Everything, everything is going fine. When everything is good, you good. When everything is perfect, you perfect. When everything is right, you upright. But it, guess what? Things will hit the fan. Oh, things will hit the fan. And then we're going to see if you stay upright when everything is going wrong. We're going to see if you stay upright when everything is going left for you. You understand? Read nine. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, mm -hmm. Do a joke for God for naught. Has not thou made an hedge about him uh -huh. and about his house mm -hmm. and about all that he hath on every side? Read. Thou has blessed the work of his hands, mm -hmm. and his substance is increased in the land. You said a lot of y'all think that the, the different blessings of y'all life Y'all think y'all are going to have those things forever. Y'all think y'all y'all are entitled to those things. Y'all not entitled to those things. You understand? The most I got to take all those things away from you. And then we'll see if you if you keep the laws with a good courage. Come on. But put forth thy hand now. What did Satan say? But put forth thine hand now. We reading Job's, uh, we reading Satan's suspicion for Job. You understand? Guess what? Satan got a suspicion for a lot of y'all who got y'all friends in Border of Blue, who got y'all head wraps on. Who got y'all nice skirts with, with the fringe at the bottom? You understand? You got a multi-layered hair wrap. It's six different colors. Satan is suspicious of a lot of y'all. You understand? Why? Because Satan is obedient. But a lot of y'all are not going to be obedient when things hit the fan. You understand? Remember, the Bible says that everything the Lord God created in the heavens, they obedient. But a lot of y'all, mm-mm, y'all not obedient. You understand? Y'all obedient when everything is going good. But what happens if everything spirals out of control? Will you be obedient? Satan is suspicious of a lot of y'all. You understand? Read that verse again. Verse uh, 11. But put forth thine hand now mm -hmm. and touch all that he has. It says do what? And put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has. Mm -hmm. And he will curse thee to thy face. You see that thing? Read on. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm -hmm. Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So what you got to understand is that every trial is pre-measured. You understand? Satan is not just on the loose doing what he will. You understand? Satan is not measuring your amount of persecution. Satan is not measuring your, the, the fire that, that's going to be lit behind you. You understand? He does not do those things. That's not his place. You understand? The Most High God says, okay, this and that is in your power, but this and that thou shalt not touch. Every, every trial is what? Every trial is pre-measured. You understand? It's catered just for you. You understand? And it's just enough for you to make it through. You got just enough power to make it through whatever trial you're going through. You understand? But a lot of times when you go through a trial, you reject the most high. You don't maintain, you don't maintain your faith. You understand? You don't maintain the spirit. You don't stay in the spirit. Read that, read, read that verse again. In verse, um, read, yeah, no, read 11 first. Job 111. Mm -hmm. But put forth thy hand now mm -hmm. and touch all that he had, mm -hmm. and he will curse thee to thy face. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm -hmm. Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Mm -hmm. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. You see that thing? So the trial that we go through is pre-measured. It's calculated. It's not just it's, it's not just everything is going haywire. You know, you go through a trial, you feel like, you feel like San Francisco. Oh, this, this is the big one. This is the big one. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Y'all pray with me. Y'all fast with me. I don't know. I don't know. The Christian church looking real good right now. Y'all turn to Sanford and Son. You understand? Not understanding that what? Every trial is pre-measured just for you. And you got just enough strength to make it through. If you believe in the Lord your God. If you have faith in the Lord your God. Read. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. It says what happened? So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. You see the thing? So, so Satan is not allowed to do what he will. You understand? Satan has to follow strict orders and instruction. Let's read on. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Mm -hmm. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. Mm -hmm. And the Sabians fell upon them Refasting. and took them away. Mm -hmm. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Mm -hmm. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said. So he just lost his oxes and his asses. Now he got more bad news coming through the door. Come on. The fire of God has fallen from heaven mm -hmm. and have burned up the sheep and the servants and mm -hmm. consumed them. Mm -hmm. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Now he just lost his sheep and his servants. Come on. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, mm -hmm. The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Mm -hmm. Yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword 
and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Mm -hmm. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking By wine. what? Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine. So now it's getting real personal. Now it's getting very, very personal. It says, Thy sons and thy daughters now. Read. Were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Read. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness mm -hmm. and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are all, excuse me, and they are dead. And I am only escaped alone to tell you. So now he just lost all of his sons. Every last one of his sons that were living, he just lost every last one of them. So it just got real personal just now. Come on. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head. He did what? Rent his mantle and shaved his head uh -huh. and fell down upon the ground. So it says he rose, he rent his mantle, meaning he, he tore his garment. It says he shaved his head, which is a sign of mourning and, and lowliness of spirit humbling yourself in humility it says and what else and fell down upon the ground and fell down upon the ground which is another sign of what being being sorrowful and being lowly in spirit and what else did he do and worship and what and worship it says job worshiped job worshiped he worshiped how many of y'all would have worshiped yeah job was like no but guess what when he rent his mantle he ripped his clothes now you know black folks we love our clothes now you understand so you know that this man is going through some, some serious trials right now for him to rip his clothes, shave his head. Y'all know we love our hair too, those of us who still got it. Y'all love y'all hair, y'all still got it. If y'all lost it, guess what? You remember those days when you had it and you miss it. But anyway, this man shaved his head, ripped his clothes. You understand? Shaved his head, ripped his clothes, laid down on the ground. Y'all know we are clean people. So he going through it right now. But guess, with all that being said, he, he worshiped the most High God. He worshiped the most High God. He didn't go off on a tangent and start cursing and spitting. It says he worshiped the one true God. That's what he did. Let's read on. And said, naked came I out of my mother's what womb. What did he say? Naked came I out of my mother's womb. He said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Read on. And naked shall I return thither. Now, that's a heavy statement to make in that situation. That's very, very heavy. He says, naked came I out of my mother's womb, meaning into this world. It says, and naked shall I return thither. Guess what? I didn't come into this world with none of those things. It's a blessing that the Most High God even allowed me to come into this world. And guess what? When I leave this world, I'm not taking nothing, whether it be my wealth, whether it be my children, I'm not taking nothing with me when I leave anyway. You understand? We all got to bow the knee before the Father on Judgment Day alone. So guess what? D David spoke well, um, excuse me, Job spoke well in the spirit when everything was going bad for him. That means he did what? He maintained his faith. That means he maintained his integrity. But meanwhile, we, we get docked hours at work and we ready to lead the truth. You know what I'm saying? Your, your husband vex you a little bit. You ready to lead the truth. You ready to smoke some weed. You know what I'm saying? Your wife get on your nerve a little bit. You ready to put her away. You ready to commit adultery. Just baby trials. Baby trials. Nobody died. You know what I'm saying? You, you didn't lose all your wealth. You, you didn't lose oxen, asses, sheep, and servants. You know what I'm saying? You didn't lose all of your sons that you had. Baby trials. Small trials, you understand? A straw on a camel, you understand? And, and your whole back is broken. Meanwhile, this man just lost what they call it all. You understand? All he left with his daughters. They can't, they can't even continue his his uh they can't even continue his lineage. That's what he left with. But guess what? He maintained his integrity. Read 21 again. And said. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, mm -hmm. and naked shall I return thither. Read. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. He says, the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Read on. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That, he said what? Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So guess what? Not only did he praise the most High God, he didn't exalt Satan. Many times in y'all trials, y'all exalt Satan. Man, Satan is really putting me through it right now. Satan is... Man, I got a flat tire. Man, Satan is on me right now. Man, I just, I came late for work. They wrote me up. Man, Satan is really, Satan is, man, Satan trying to break me. Satan is, I can't believe Satan is doing all these things to me. Y'all exalt Satan like, like he running the show. Like he fought with the most high in the beginning and won. And now he running, running the show. Like he called the shots. Like he shot called it. He not though. A lot of y'all in y'all trials, y'all exalt Satan. Job never even acknowledged Satan. Never even acknowledged Satan at all. All hell just broke loose, literally. That's what they call all hell breaking loose, what just happened. He never even acknowledged Satan at all. A lot of you Israelites, class go off. Oh, hey, hey. Look at Satan. 
No, how about we just stream and copyrighted material? Maybe we, maybe, maybe we just stream and copyrighted material. And maybe class will be on shortly. We can even keep our faith when we stream and copyrighted material. You know what I'm saying? How about it was just something small? How about we, we just maintain our integrity on a small level? Oh, class is off a second. We might miss a precept. The class will be released in, in a couple of days. Small stuff. We can't even maintain our, our, our we can't even maintain our patience and stand in spirit. Class go off for two minutes. Man, Satan, man. Satan, man. Every week. And it's not even every week, but but we exaggerate every trial that we go through. Every trial get exaggerated. It get blown out of proportion. Now, they go Satan, man. Esau, man. Satan, man. This is crazy, man. Can't even stand in spirit for two minutes. Got to examine ourselves. Read 21 again. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, uh -huh. and naked shall I return thither. He says, and naked shall I return thither. Read. The Lord gave, uh -huh. and the Lord hath taken away. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Read. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many of y'all going to bless the name of the Lord when the most I take more than one child in a day? I mean, God forbid. I honestly, I got children myself. God forbid. I don't want to go through it. Personally, I'm just being honest. I don't want to go through it, but what happens when you go through it? Will you bless the name of the Lord? This example is here for you to do so. It's the reason why these things are written. It's, it's written for you to do so. You, 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 you live the way our forefathers live. These things are written four times for our learning. You learn things so you can apply those things. Let's read on. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. It says, all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Some of y'all, man, I don't, I don't even know. My faith is wavering. Y'all get into a car accident, you're like, I don't know, man. My faith wavering. I ain't had no insurance. How about losing sheep, oxen, servants? Those are lives. Servants Servants are men and women who, who served you. Did you, you knew them from childhood. They took care of you. You know what I'm saying? How about losing their life? You understand? You, you, you get into a fender bender. You talk, hey, how you doing, sis? Man, my, my, my faith is really wavering. What's wrong, sis? My bumper hanging off. Your bumper hanging off? Yeah, and your faith wavering? Because your bumper hanging Is you kidding me? You to come to this world with, with that bumper on your back? Just showing you how we are less of stature from our forefathers. We are less of stature. So you ask yourself, how am I going, how am I going to act when Satan considers me? How am I going to act when Satan considers me? Some of y'all, some of y'all, the most I got ain't even putting y'all on Satan radar because y'all falling every day. Some of y'all ain't running, ain't running into Satan because y'all too busy running behind him. You can't run into the devil if you're running behind him. You understand? Some of y'all team Satan. So y'all ain't never really been through nothing because you ain't strong enough. You still team Satan. You still following him. You still running behind him. You can't run into him until you stop running behind him. You understand? So the most I got ain't even put y'all through nothing. The most I got ain't after Satan has y'all considered so-and-so. You understand? Because he know you very well. The most I got don't have, don't have to put you on his radar because Satan, Satan know you personally, first name basis. 322. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolish. Mm -hmm. So now, from now, read on, chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Y'all had to think Satan got to present himself before the Lord. He got to stand up in sons of God with his chest out. He got to stand up in sons of God like the rest of the angels with his chest out. And he better not flinch in my Captain Shim voice. You understand? He is not special. He on strict orders. Strict orders. And he better comply with those orders. And he cannot do anything outside of what the, the Lord God lists for him to do. He cannot accomplish anything outside of what the Lord God lists for him to accomplish. Read that verse again. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Mm. And Satan came also among them mm. to present himself before the Lord. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm. From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, mm. From going to and fro in the earth, mm. and from walking up and down in it. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? So now, this is the second occasion. We read about the second occasion now. He says, Hast thou considered my servant Job? So what does that mean? Job just went through hell in, in, in chapter 1, right? He just went through hell. So now, the Lord is asking, Has you considered Job again? So now you got to understand something. Satan left for a season. He didn't get bombarded. He went through the trial. The trial was amazingly terrible. You understand? He overcame the trial. He maintained his honor, maintained his faith, maintained his integrity. 
And then guess what? Satan left for a season. You understand? Say, get that real quick. You know what I want? About him leaving for a season. Let's get that real quick. We're going to read that real quick. Yeah, go ahead. This is the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 13. We're in Luke 4, 13. Come on. And when the devil had ended all the temptation. When, when, when Satan ends all his temptation to break you. Come on. He departed from him for a season. He departed from him for a season. Satan left. Go back to Job. Remember, Job went through that trial in chapter 1. Now in chapter 2, what? God is asking about Job again. Asking, has he considered him again? Why do God got to ask, do we consider him? Because Job didn't fall for Satan's tricks. Job didn't run behind Satan and, and dismiss the Most High and lose faith and start wavering. You understand? He's not team Satan. He's still faithful to the Most High God. He maintained his integrity. You understand? He maintained his integrity. So now, what's happening now? Now, God got to ask, Satan, has you considered Job again? Meaning what? He went through it. He left for a season. Now the Most High God, because Job is still faithful, perfect, and upright, fearing God and eschewing evil, now he has to put him on the radar again because he's not team Satan. He don't run with him. You understand? So now God asks him what? Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm -hmm. Hast thou considered my servant Job, mm -hmm. that there was none like him in the earth, mm -hmm. a perfect and upright man, mm -hmm. one that fears God and eschews evil? Read. And still he holdeth fast his integrity. What did God say? And still he holdeth fast his integrity. And still he holdeth fast his integrity. Read on. Although thou movest me against him Read. to destroy him without cause. Although you were suspicious of him, Satan. Satan is suspicious of a lot of y'all. You understand? And, 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 and the scriptures say uh, we are not ignorant of Satan's device. Satan got many devices. He's suspicious of a lot of y'all. Satan was suspicious of Job. You understand? It says, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Why? Because guess what? That was, Satan's suspicion was not true. You understand? The test came back. What? He passed. Satan was found what? The devil is a liar. You understand? He did not curse God to his face. You understand? He did not curse the most High God when he lost his sons and lost his substance. He did not curse God. The devil is a liar. So now God got to say, hey, what about my servant Joy again? That's my boy right there. You consider him? You can't break him. The trial ain't to break you. You understand? But Satan knows a lot of y'all ain't right. Read three again. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm. Hast thou considered my servant Job, mm. that there is none like him in the earth, mm. a perfect and an upright man, mm. one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Read. And he, excuse me, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, mm. although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So you see that thing? So guess what? Read on, watch this. And Satan answered the Lord and said, mm. Skin for skin. Satan is something else. So now Satan is saying, Satan, Satan is, is requesting permission to touch his flesh now. Remember, Satan touched his substance and his children. Now Satan is, is asking for permission to touch his body. He says, skin for skin. Skin for skin, meaning I want to touch his body now. Read on. Yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. You see that? All that a man hath will he give for his life. So now guess what happened? The trials is getting harder, more intense, more severe. You understand? But guess what? Read on. Watch this. But put forth thine hand now mm. and touch his bone and his flesh, mm -hmm. and he will curse thee to thy face. Satan said what? Satan says if you touch his bone and his flesh, he will curse thee to your face, God. He will. Read on. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm. Behold, he is in thine hand, Read. but save his life. So what? The trial just increased now. Now, he got, now, he, now he's going to be touched himself physically. He's going to be touched. But guess what? There are still limitations. Every trial has limitations. We think all oh, hell is breaking loose. Yeah, but it's a control hell. It's a control hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it might be breaking loose on you, but it's controlled. It was calculated. It was measured. You know what I'm saying? To the last T, it was measured. He says, but guess what? Don't touch his life, though. Touch his, touch his body and his bones, but not his life. That's a measured trial, even though it gets severe. You know what I'm saying? So guess what? As we get stronger, because best believe, when Job maintains integrity, he leveled up in his spirit. When Job went through what he went through and he maintained his integrity and his honor and did not curse the most high God to his face, guess what? He leveled up in the spirit. So now guess what? You leveled up in the spirit, the trials level up. So as you level up, guess what? The trials will get harder. But you are more experienced. So they get stronger, you get stronger. They get stronger, you get stronger. So it's not that, oh, I can't do it. The problem is you're getting frustrated. You're getting frustrated. You don't want to fight no more, even though you got the strength to fight. Now you've been around for a little while. You've been through some things. Then something happened where you've lost children or you've lost a job or your car get towed or whatever the case may be. 
Now you have the strength inside of you, but you don't want to fight no more. You frustrated with the Most High. You ready to curse God to his face. You ready to turn your back on the Most High. You ready to go back to the world. You don't want to use your strength. Read that verse. And the Lord said unto Satan, mm. Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. But do what? But save his life. Read on. So Satan, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot until his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all. Mm. And he sat down among the ashes. So Job got Job got sores, sore boils from the sole of his foot until his crown, I mean the top of his head, top of his head. And now he got a piece. Um, it says a pot shirt and he's scraping himself. So he's what his skin is irritated. He's itching. You understand? He's just going through utter hell right now. Right. So read on. Then said his wife unto him, mm -hmm. doest thou still retain that integrity? Now, now what didn't happen? Now Satan then answered to his wife. Now Satan then answered his wife. She said, what? Doest thou still retain that integrity? It says, doest thou still maintain thine integrity? Remember, he maintained his integrity on the first go round. Now Satan then, then threw that in his face. Be very, very mindful of who speak when you're going through what you're going through. Be very, very mindful of who open their mouth and say things that are hurtful when you're already at your lowest. You understand? Be very mindful of that thing because what they say could break you. When you're already going through it, you got to be very, very mindful of who you let around you. You understand? When you're at your lowest moments, you don't let, you don't allow everyone to be around you. I'm going to give an example from the Messiah, matter of fact. I'll praise him. Give Matthew. Matthew 26, even the Messiah, as strong as he was, when he's at his lowest moments, he did not allow everybody around him. You understand? Sometimes when you're at your lowest moments, you need, you need, you need the, the squad of the squad around you. You understand? You, you need the cream of the crop, and you, you need that cream too. You understand? You need the, the right people around you when you're at your lowest times. Let's get Matthew 26. Everybody can't be around you when you're low. Satan might enter into them. Matthew 26, start at verse uh, 36. Matthew 26, we're going to start at verse 36. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane, mm -hmm. and said unto his disciples, mm -hmm. Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Mm -hmm. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. So it says Christ, this is before um, the band came to get Christ. This is a very heavy moment. Christ has fulfilled everything in the scriptures besides him being taken and things that pertain to him being beaten, crucified. Everything else prior to that, he's fulfilled. So he knows the only thing that's left is him being captured, him being tortured, him being, him being put to death and crucified for the nation. So he's very heavy because he, he knows in his mind he has fulfilled all the scriptures, the miracles, um, him uh, bringing forth uh, the understanding to the northern kingdom. He's fulfilled everything. So now he knows the only thing that's left for him to fulfill is the prophecies that pertain to him being taken, crucified, and the things that follow after that. So he's very heavy because he knows what the scriptures say about what's going to happen when they come to get him. So he took with him who? Read and the he, bottom. And he took with him Peter. He took Peter, which is the head of the, of the apostles. Come on. And the two sons of Zebedee. The two sons of Zebedee are James and John. You understand? He took three out of the, the 12, well, the 11, because we know Judas went to betray him. So out of the 11 that was left, he only took three of those 11 with him. That was by design. We're going we gonna to read on. Come on. And began to be sorrowful. He began to what? To be sorrowful. He began to be what? Sorrowful. Read. And very heavy. He began to be sorrowful and very heavy. He didn't need all the 11 with him. You were saying, oh, yeah, he, he, chose, he chose the 12. But guess what? Out of that 12, he had three, you understand, that were very close to him. And out of those three, he had one who the Bible says that he loved. So he loved everybody. So if the Bible pinpoints one out of the three, that means he really loved them. And it's talking about John. You understand? So read on. Then saith he unto them, mm -hmm. my soul is exceeding sorrowful. He said, my soul is exceeding sorrowful. Come on. Even unto death. I'm sorrowful to death. And like, you know, people say, I'm scared to death. He said, I'm sorrowful unto death. Read. Tarry ye here and watch with me. He said, I, I, I just want y'all with me as I go through this. Tarry, tarry ye here and watch with me. Come on. And he went a little further mm -hmm. and fell on his face. He did what? And he went a little further and fell on his face. The same way Job fell on his face when Job was going through, when he lost his sons. So it says Christ fell on his face. This, this is a very low moment. Him falling on his face was a reflection of how he felt in his spirit. Low and sorrowful. Come on. And prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it be possible, mm -hmm. let this cup pass from me. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, not as I will, 
But it's that will. So he knew he knew the only thing left for him, he knew the next thing for him in the prophecy was, was for him to be crucified. So he said, look, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He says, but not as I will, but as thou will. You understand? Read. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep mm -hmm. and saith unto Peter, what? Can ye not watch with me one hour? Mm -hmm. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Mm -hmm. The spirit indeed is willing, mm -hmm. but the flesh is weak. So now let's go back. Let's go back. So when you get your low moments, you got to watch who you got around you. You don't need everybody around you saying something stupid, saying something out of season, saying something out the spirit, saying something off the wall. You don't need that around you. You understand? When you're at your low moments, you need the right people around you at, when, when you're going through your low moments. Now, read, uh, read 9, Job 2 and verse 9. Job chapter 2, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then said his wife unto him, mm -hmm. Doest thou still retain thy integrity? She said, Do you still maintain your integrity, Job? Huh? You, you, you still believe in this God stuff, this Bible stuff? Mm -hmm. Read. Curse God and die. Curse God and die. Man, go back to the world. Be, go, go back to being a nigga. Forget this perfect stuff, this upright stuff. Come on, man, forget this stuff. Perfect schmurfic. Curse God and die. Come on. But he said unto her, uh -huh. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speak. Y'all know what he was saying, right? <laughs> Read that verse again. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speak. He said, you, you sound like, mm, 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 mm. You speak like one of them foolish women speak. Come on. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Mm -hmm. And shall we not receive evil? Read that verse again. But he said unto her, mm -hmm. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speak. You, like, you, you speak like one of them stupid, dumb women in the world. You speak like one of the foolish women speakers. Come on. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Uh -huh. And shall we not receive evil? You said that? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and not receive evil? So guess what? Job did not forget. The time when he was flourishing. A lot of y'all, as soon as y'all go through something, y'all start y'all start lying. Y'all start lying and lying and lying. Let me tell you how you start lying. You start using words like always. You start using words like never. When you start using those words, you probably got the devil on you. You probably got the devil on you. Because most of the time when you use those words, you are lying. You say, man, I'm always going through something. What was you going through yesterday? Oh, well, nothing. But today just been so hard. Well, that's not always. You understand? Oh, I never get things my way. What about when we got the job you wanted? Oh, well, yeah, that, well, that's not never. You got the devil on you. You exaggerating your problems. You exaggerating your issues. You forgot when you were flourishing. You forgot all your blessings. Now, now Satan now say entered into you and you start using words to exaggerate and, and, and to add pain and add sorrow to your own heart. You vexing yourself. Man, something is all, if it ain't one thing, it's another. What about, what about when your son was born? I thought, I, thought was, I thought that was the happiest day on the earth to you. What about when your daughter was born? I thought, I thought, I thought you praised the most I got. You said hallelujah like six times in, in, in the hospital bed. But now you're saying you can't never catch a break. What about when they said that you wasn't going to make it and then you made it? What about that day? Was that a good day? I'm, I, I forgot. I'm, I'm just trying to find out. I don't understand no more. Why do, why do we start lying let's say in and we start to speak things that are uncomely and out of season that are lies? You're just lying. I can't never catch a break. Thou sayest, you lying and Satan has entered into you. And now you have exaggerated your trial. Why? Because you don't want to fight no more. You frustrated now. You got the strength. You don't want to use it. Why can't you just coast through this walk? Why can't this walk just be chill? Read that verse again. But he said unto her, mm -hmm. thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaking. You sound stupid. That's what he told her. You sound stupid. Sometimes I tell people when they're around you, and Lord's will, you don't got them around you when you're, when you're in your low moments. But if you do, you got to tell them, you sound stupid. Come on. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Mm -hmm. And shall we not receive evil? You said that thing? Shall we receive good and not receive evil? But some of y'all be acting like you always receive evil. The Bible talk about you too. Let's get that. Let's get, get Sirach. The Bible talk about y'all who do that. <laughs> this is always happening. You just smile at the new moon. Man, I, I, man, I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I, I've been trying to stand in spirit, but... I just been I just been depressed every day. You was just doing the moonwalk at the new moon. How much you been depressed every day? You lying to my every day. You just moonwalk. I saw you do the robot. You had the little arm bending thingy. I saw you do it at the new moon. We all saw you. I got the pictures. But you said I've been depressed every day. Y'all forget all the good times that the Lord blessed y'all with. Y'all forget everything. 
Job didn't forget. Let's get that. Sirach 11. Yeah, read Sirach 11, read 25. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 11, verse 25. Uh -huh. In the day of prosperity. In the what? In the day of prosperity. The Bible says in the day of prosperity, read. There is a forgetfulness of affliction. When everything is going good, you forget about everything that happened. You forget about all the, all, all the bad days you had. You forget about um, the time you thought the bike and skin your knee. When everything is going good, you forget about everything bad that ever happened to you. You, you forget about that bully that beat you up in fourth grade. When everything is going good, you forget about everything. You understand? You forget about the time you got rebuked, you got corrected. You understand? And it was that strong correction. When everything is going good, you forget about all the times of affliction. But here's the problem, though. Read on. And in the day of affliction. And it says, for a lot of y'all, in the day of affliction, read. There is no more remembrance of prosperity. It says there is no more remembrance of prosperity. A lot of times you, when y'all get afflicted, y'all forget about all the times of prosperity when the Lord blessed y'all, when the Lord God allowed you to coast, when the Lord God let Satan leave you for a season. You forget about that. He would say, how you doing, bro? I feel good, man. I ain't been lusting. My mind been under control. You know what I'm saying? I've just been working. I've been going to camp. I've been studying. I got new precepts. I've been getting the history of me. Everything going good. <clears throat> you don't talk about that when you go through your trials, though. You forget, you forget all those conversations when the Lord God allowed Satan to leave you for a season, when the Lord God allowed you to coast in his truth. You forget about that thing. And you're not mindful of the Lord your God, how he blessed you. You're not mindful of that thing. Read that verse again. In the day of prosperity, mm -hmm. there is a forgetfulness of affliction. Read. And in the day of affliction. The moment you go through something, in the day of affliction, read. There is no more remembrance of prosperity. You remember, you, you remember no blessings. The Lord ain't never blessed me. What's wrong, bro? I got a flat tire, man. I'm just telling, like, when I'm going to catch a break. Brother, it's a flat. You got a spare, don't you? Yeah, I got a spare. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? This jack be hurting my arm. Like, brother, <laughs> you, you ain't ready, man. A lot of y'all are not ready for this truth. You understand? Like, like I got to level up in this truth, man. Like I got to start y'all day understanding that hell may be in the mix. You got to wake up like, mm, I'll pray some more. Side. Send these prayers up, and I may catch hell today. And I'm okay with that thing. I'm going to be like, uh... Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. When I, when, I, when I get thrown in the furnace, I'm going to be cool in the furnace. I'm going to be cool in the furnace. A whistling wind. You understand? A lot of y'all got to be like them. Where we at? We in Sirach? Yes, sir. Let's go back. Where we at? Job 2.10. Read that again. Job chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. But he said unto her, mm -hmm. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speak. He said, man, you speak like one of the foolish women speak. Read on. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Woman, well, don't you know we were just rich? Don't you know we still rich? Don't you know we got, we just had oxen, sheep all my life. Everything been good. Don't you know the Lord blessed me with sons, daughters, manservants, maidservants. Don't you know I was the richest man in the East? I was the richest man in the East. He said, shall we what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Re and shall we not receive evil? Like I ain't prepared to receive no evil. Y'all big babies in this truth. A lot of y'all got invisible pacifiers. A lot of y'all, Israelites just rocking invisible pacifiers. You got the little clip to your shirt. We just can't see it. A lot of y'all are big babies in this truth. Big babies. I need counsel. What's going on? Man, I was late for work. They wrote me up. Don't be late for work. What are you talking about? Get out of here with that. I'm not going to sit in no counsel room with you all night. Read that verse again. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Read. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Uh -huh. And shall we not receive evil? And shall we not receive evil? Read on. And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Job never sinned with his lips. <clears throat> he didn't start lying and say, man, this is it's always happening. I can't never catch a break because he would have been a liar. He'd been flourishing his whole life. He'd been coasting. He'd been coasting his whole time. Man, I've always been sick. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all get sick. Man, I feel like I'm always sick. I'm real sickly. You ain't real sickly. It's your first time you ever had boils or bios in your body. It's the <clears> first time. But like y'all, y'all, y'all start exaggerating. Y'all start lying. Read. Verse eleven. Mm -hmm. Now, when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, uh -huh. they came every one from his own place: mm -hmm. Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, mm -hmm. and Zophar the Namathite. Mm -hmm. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. Mm. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and mm. knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept. So they seen Job. Job was jacked up. They started weeping. They knew it was Job, but it didn't look like Job. That's heavy. That's heavy right there. 
they they knew it was Joe, but that did not look like Joe. They 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 immediately start mourning and weeping. Come on. And they rent everyone his mantle mm -hmm. and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. Mm -hmm. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights. Mm -hmm. And none spake a word unto him. They what? And none spake a word unto him. Mm -hmm. For they saw that his grief was very great. Y'all see the thing? They saw that his grief was very great. So some trials will leave you what? Sorrowful. You understand? Some trials will leave you sorrowful. Filled with a lot of grief. Let's get Ecclesiastes. Let's read about uh, sorrow and grief. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 7. And let's, let's read verse 3. The book of Ecclesiastes 7, verse 3. I'm, I'm going to show you all um, the benefits of sorrow the, or, the, or the benefits of grief. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 3. Uh -huh. Sorrow is better than laughter. Uh -uh. They, they didn't hear that. Read that again, bro. Sorrow is better than laughter. One more time, because the, the, the computer is, is crashing. They don't comprehend. Sorrow is better than laughter. The Bible says that sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow is better than laughter. Read on. For by the sadness of the countenance. For by the sadness of the countenance or the mind. Read. The heart is made better. It says the mind is made better. The mind is made better. Guess what? You, you laughing. Laughing is not going to edify you. You joking and jesting. It's not edifying. It's not edifying at all. You understand? Somebody telling you a good joke and, and you got that good laugh where you, you're starting to tear up and you're like, woo, woo. It's not edifying. Your, your countenance is not made better. Your countenance is not made better. You have Cut the phone off right there. Yeah, it's right there. It says, sorrow is better than laughing. It says, through the sadness of the countenance, it says the heart is made better. The heart is made better through sadness. Sadness. So guess what? Sometimes you're going through a trial so God can make your mind better. So God can make your spirit better. You ever, you ever, you ever, you ever thought about that? Maybe, maybe we should all highlight this verse together, shall we? Maybe we should highlight this verse. Read that again. Sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow is better than laughter. Come on. For by the sadness of the countenance. By the, the sadness of the countenance, read. The heart is made better. That's where your heart at right here. The heart is made better. So what does that mean? Let's get Romans 5. What does that mean? How, how, do, we, how do we get some understanding from that? Let's get Romans 5. And I start at verse 3. This is Romans, the fifth chapter in the third verse. Mm -hmm. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We do what? We glory in tribulations also. It says we glory in tribulations. We glory when we go through sadness. <clears throat> you understand? Read. <laughs> now, real quick, read that verse again. And not only so, mm -hmm. but we glory in tribulations also, mm -hmm. knowing that the tribulation work is patient. So when it says that we glory in tribulations, does that mean you smile like, like, like the cat from Alice in Wonderland? No, that's not what that means. It means that you stay in the spirit. It means that you stay in the spirit. You maintain your integrity. You keep worshiping the one true God. You bless the name of the Lord God. That's what that means. It says we glory in tribulations also. You understand? Read that verse again, verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, mm. because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. You see that thing? So guess what? Through these things that happen to us, guess what? These things are to make us better. These things happen to us to make us better. You understand? God doing these things, because guess what? God is trying to purify you. God is examining your heart. So Satan, Satan may be trying to break you, but that's not God's intention. That was not God's intention for Job. God knew Job would overcome, but do you know you're going to overcome? You know what I'm saying? When God say, has thou considered my servant, uh, my servant Jacob? God is asking Satan, has he considered you? Because so God is faithful that you will overcome. But do you know you will overcome? You got the strength to fight. The trial is calculated. You know what I'm saying? The trial has limitations. God has to validate and stamp the trial before it can even occur. Do you trust your own strength? God said sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So that means you have just enough spirit to overcome everything in a 24 period, 24 hour period. You got just enough spirit to overcome it. But I, but, but, but do you wake up with the mind to fight? Or do you wake up with, with the mind to bow down? The mind to roll over? The mind to play dead? Read that again. 
Romans 5 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And not only so, mm -hmm. but we glory in tribulations also, mm -hmm. knowing that tribulation worketh patience, mm -hmm. and patience experience, mm -hmm. and experience hope. It says in what? And experience hope. It says, and then experience gives you hope. The mind is made better now. Hope is in the mind. So these tribulations that cause sorrow, they have a domino effect. And the end result is the mind is made better. Why? Because you have hope now. Hope is up here. You understand? Hope can't be seen. But when everything you see is breaking, hell is breaking loose everywhere you turn, guess what? The mind has hope. The countenance just got made better. Now, guess what? Anything that comes your way before, you can always use your last trial, your former tribulations as a reference point. I was able to stand in the evil day. I was able to, guess what? <clears throat> to tell somebody else to stand in spirit while I was going through my trial. As I was going through my trial, I was able to counsel others and give them understanding and give them wisdom. I was able to, 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 to come back and be like Christ. Like, you see the holes in my hands? But I overcame, though. You understand what I'm saying? So when these things happen and Satan is throwing everything on you and you feel like you can't catch a break, he might use, he might use your husband. He might use the sister in the congregation. He might use your wife. You understand? He might use your finances. He might use your boss. He might use your supervisor. You understand? Guess what? We cannot lose hope. Get to Rock 34. Sirach 34, read 13. The book of Sirach, chapter 34, verse 13. Mm -hmm. The spirit of those that fear the Lord it shall... It says the what? The spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live. So Satan might be trying to break your spirit. Satan might be trying to kill your spirit. But the Bible says the spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live. Satan won't be able to kill your spirit. No, ma no matter what God allows, Satan won't be able to kill your spirit. Because it says the spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live. Read again. Sirach 4, 34, 13. Mm -hmm. The spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live. The spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live. Read. For their hope is in him that saveth. You see that? Your, 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 your hope is not on your job. Your hope is not in your husband. You may hope he get his spirit right. Your hope is not in your wife. You might hope she get her spirit right and stop giving you hell. But your hope is never in her in the first place. Your hope might be that you get the uh, bonus you want, the motion you want raise that you want but your hope is not in your job so satan can't use these things to break you because your hope was never there in the first place read that verse again the spirit of those that fear the lord shall live read for their hope is in him that saveth you see that their hope is in him that saveth them that's where your hope got to be at <laughs> what did the hope come from the hope came from the tribulation the lord god gave you the spirit to, to, to uh, come through the tribulation now what the countenance is made better you can use that hope in the future hope is like a bank you understand Every time you go to tribulation, you come out on the other side, you maintain your integrity, you maintain your honor, you bless the name of the Lord God. Guess what? Your hope and your faith builds up. Hope and faith occupy the same ship. You understand? Those things build up. They accumulate. Read that again. The spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live. Uh -huh. For their hope is in him that saveth them. Now, let's get to Rock 27. So we can further understand these things. So you can overcome... When God asks Satan, has he considered you? So you can overcome when Satan considers you. Sirach 27, read verse 5. Sirach chapter 27, verse 5. Mm -hmm. The furnace. The what? The furnace. The furnace, come on. Proveth the potter's vessel. The Bible says that the furnace proveth the potter's vessel. Read on. So the trial of man is in his reason. So the trial of man is in his reason. What does that mean? Let's hold that. Let's get Isaiah. We're going to hold that. We're coming back to Sirach 27. Let's get Isaiah 64. And let's read verse 8. Isaiah 64, verse 8. Read. But now, O Lord, mm. thou art our Father. What did it say? Thou art our Father. God is our Father. Come on. We are the clay. We are the what? We are the clay. It says God is our Father. It says we are the clay. Come on. And thou, our Father. And what? And thou, our Father. It says we are the clay. God is our Father. You understand? We are the clay. God is our potter. Let's go back to Sirach 27 now. Sirach 27, verse 5. Read. The furnace. So guess what? The furnace, read. Proveth the potter's vessels. Read. So the trial of man. So the trial of man, read. Is in his reason. You see that thing? How can you, how can you overcome? How can you show what you made of if you never get put in the furnace? You understand? Imagine if pottery could talk. If pottery could talk. Man, you don't know, brother. 
You don't know, sister. I'm 100% porcelain. I'm made of pure gold. You understand? If pottery could talk the things it would say, but, but we're going to see when it goes through that fire. We're going to see what it's really made of. So the same way the furnace proves the potter's vessel, it says the trial of man is his reasoning. You understand? Imagine pottery right now. Yeah, yeah, brother. I'm 100% concrete. I'm 100% brick, brother. I'm 200% clay. I'm marble. You understand? I'm going to be a vase one day or a vase for you bougie Israelites. You understand? Imagine if pottery could talk. You understand? Let's get that. Get uh, Psalms 20. I mean, Proverbs 20. If pottery could talk, oh, the wonderful things it would say about itself until you put it in that furnace, though, then they're going to be saying nothing. Because guess what? Whether it comes out or not, it's going to speak for itself. Proverbs 20, read verse 6. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Watch this. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Read it again. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Yeah, I'm strong, brother. I ain't going nowhere. I'm 10 toes down. I'm holding the line. I'm holding the line. Holding the line. Bro, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be at every Sabbath, every new moon. Bro, I'm going to be 144. You understand? Oh, man. So is, yeah, yeah I'm, probably, I'm probably Phoebe. In my spirit, I think I'm Shifra or Pua. Most men will, will proclaim their own goodness. Just like if pottery could talk. I'm 100% porcelain. Put me in that fire. I ain't gonna burn. I'm I'm, I'm pure gold. Oh no, I ain't, I ain't that stuff that you can get from Ishmael Corner Store. Oh no, I'm a, I'm 100% gold. But what happens when God asks Satan to consider you and put you in that fire? If you ain't gold, you gonna melt. You understand? So the trial is gonna reveal to you who God already knew you were. You understand? You ain't proving nothing to God when you go through your trial because God already knows you. God knows the end before the beginning. So sometimes God got to put you through a trial. You may fall, but now you see where you at. God already knew where you was at. You thought you were high and mighty. Then you fell. Now God is showing you where you at. God revealing you to you because you, you deceive your own self. A lot of us deceive our own selves of our own uprightness. Read that verse again. But God got to show you where you at in this walk. So when you fall to pornography, God showing you that you still got a, a heavy lust demon on you. When you fall to adultery, God showing you that you are still without understanding. You understand? When you... Run your mouth and talk back to your husband. God showing you that you speak as one of the foolish women speaketh. You thought you were a uh, uh, Proverbs 31. God is showing you that you still have characteristics and attributes of the ostrich. That's what God is showing you. God has revealed you to yourself through your trial. You think you're an all-powerful officer, right? Okay. Well, then God wants you to show that with your works. God wants you to be cool when you get put in that furnace. God wants you to come out the furnace the same way you went in. And then we'll see who you really are. Read, read that verse again. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Most men, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Read again. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Read. But a faithful man. But a what? But a faithful man. But a faithful Israelite. Read. Who can find? God said, who can find him? To my you, 100% porcelain. If pottery could talk. The Bible said we the clay. Most I got is the potter. If pottery could talk, I'm 100% gold. Meanwhile, you, 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 you blue being recycled plastic. You ain't going to make it through that fire. You ain't going to make it because you never believed in the first place. You never believed, You never studied in the first place. You, know, you, you, you blue bin, recycle plastic. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's who you is. Revolving door. Just a cycle. You'll be in, you'll be out. Read that again. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Read but a faithful man. But a what? A faithful man. But the Bible says, but a faithful man, come on. Who can find? Who can find a faithful man? You understand? So guess what? God is looking for a faithful man. God wants us to overcome. Let's get Luke 22. Let's get Luke 22. Because even though God wants a faithful man, we, we all got to be proven. We all got to be, there's a whole system in place. There's a whole design already set. Luke 22, read 31. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Mm. And the Lord said, mm. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. What did it say? Satan hath desired to have you. Satan think he could break you. This is Christ's own mouth. He says, Satan hath desired to have you. He's suspicious of you. He think you ain't about what you shout. He desired to have you on his team. 
team Satan. He's talking to Peter, the, the chief apostle. The devil wants you to be team Satan. Read that again. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, mm. behold, Satan had desired to have you. Read. That he may sift you as weak. That he may sift you as weak. When you sift through something, you're looking for certain qualities and attributes. You understand? You're trying to see what something is really made of. Like some people sift through the sand looking for certain precious uh, metals like gold, silver. They sift through the sand. They don't want the sand. They want what's in the sand. So it says, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you. See what's really in you. See, see if you're really about what you shout. See if you really what you appear. Everything that glitter ain't gold. Read again. And the Lord said, hmm. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you. Read. That he may sift you as weak. That he may sift you as weak. Read on. But I have prayed for thee. You see that? But Christ said, I pray for you. I don't want. Christ don't want us to fall. You understand? Christ don't want us to be broken. Christ said, I have prayed for you. Come on. That thy faith fail not. I pray for you that your faith fail not. That you don't lose your hope. Come on. And when thou art converted. And when you go through this thing, read. Strengthen thy brethren. The counsel is going to be made better. And then you'll be able to do what? You'll be equipped to do what? Strengthen your nation. This thing is bigger than you. You understand? We don't go through trials for ourselves. We go through trials for ourselves and the entire nation. This thing is a whole lot bigger than you. But when you go through your trial, you're selfish. And, and you don't think about who can be affected by your fall. Then you will fall. If you don't think about who's looking up to you, then nobody, soon nobody will be looking up to you because you're going to fall. When you go through your trial, you have to think about your nation. Who is looking up to me? Who am I an example for? How long have I been laboring? Damn, do I want to be a hypocrite? Hmm. <clears throat> Inquiring minds want to know such things. Do we think upon these things? Do we think about our nation? Dang, the most I said that you wouldn't put more on me than I can bear. Why do I want to fall right now? Because you're not fighting. You equip, you skill, but you don't want to fight. Has less conceived? You got the strength, but have you been deceived? Have you been bewitched by naughtiness? From there, let's get uh, Sirach 33 and 17. When you're going through, you got to think about the nation. When, when, when you get that bewitched by naughtiness, that hellfire is okay, that that nuclear missile don't sound so bad, the least you can do is think about who in the nation to be affected. Think about these young sisters. Think about these young brothers. If you don't care about your own soul, like, you know what, that nuclear missile don't sound, this booty looks so good, I don't care about the nuclear missile no more. This man looks so good to me that I'm going to go ahead and step out on my husband and commit adultery. Or I'm going to go ahead and step out here and commit for, if he looked that good to you and you don't care about the nuclear missile no more, just think about who you're going to hurt by your fault. Think about those who you looked up to that you're going to let down. That's the least you can do. Read Sirach 33, verse 17. Sirach 33, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Consider that I labor not for myself only. It says, consider not that you labor for yourself only. Read. But for all them that seek learning. You, you, this thing is bigger than you. It says, for all them that seek learning. We got to be real men and real women in the truth. We got to think things through. These are things that we got to meditate on when we're going through our fires, when we're in our furnace. You understand? This thing is a whole lot bigger than me. This thing is a whole lot bigger than life and death. This is about eternal life and eternal death. This is a whole lot bigger than, than life and death. Somebody said, oh, this, this is a life and death situation. No, it ain't. This is an eternal life and an eternal death situation. You understand? That's what this is. And, 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 and that, that, that heaviness needs to be meditated on. Read that again. Consider that I labor not for myself only, mm -hmm. but for all them that seek learning. Mm -hmm. So now let's go back. We're in Sirach 27, right? Okay, we're going back to Sirach 27 now. And verse 5. Sirach chapter 27, verse 5. Mm -hmm. The furnace proveth the potter's vessels. Mm -hmm. So the trial of man is in his reason. You see that? It says the same way the furnace proveth the potter's vessels. It says, so the trial of man is in his reasoning. So it's the fire that validates you. Who brings the fire? That's Satan's job, to bring the fire to you. 
So Satan, Satan is a validation process. It's the fire that validates you to see if you're ready, to see if you're strong and durable. So guess what? You got, you, you got to bring the pottery to the fire to see if it's strong, to see if it's durable, to see if it will endure to the end. You understand? That's what it's for. Get James. James 5. James 5. <clears throat> and read verse, read verse 11. James chapter 5, verse 11. Come on. Behold, we count them happy which endure. What did it say? We count them happy which endure. It says we count them happy which endure. Come on. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. What did it say? Ye have heard of the patience of Job. It says you have heard of the patience of Job. We all were, we all in the New Testament. Why is Job still being mentioned? Because that's the vision for you when you go through. That's the vision. You may not be there yet. That's fine. You may not be there yet. I ain't there yet. But that's the vision. Nonetheless. You understand? Read that again. Behold, we count them happy which endure. We count them happy which endure. Come on. You have heard of the patience of Job. You have heard of the patience of Job. Come on. And have seen the end of the Lord. And you've seen the end of the Lord. Read. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. You see that? And the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Why? When, when Job came through, what did the Lord do? He restored him. He gave him more sons. Gave him his wealth back. Increased him in the land. His daughters were the most beautiful. You understand? That they were great to be valued. Showing you that, guess what? Once you overdo it and you're able to strengthen others through your example, through your walk, through, your, through you overcoming, through you getting the victory over your trials, tribulations, confidence being made better, guess what? Now we, we can go to Job, we can learn something. You understand? It's, it's not just a place to go to extract precepts. It's more than that. You understand? And guess what? The man next to you, his life is a walking Bible. If he followed the Bible, he can be a walking Bible. Mother Shemar says some of us would be the only Bible uh, Israelites ever even read. So when, when they read you, what kind of story are you telling? Do it abate the courage or do it give them courage? You understand? Do it build them up or do it break them down? What kind of Bible are you? Are you the nigga James version or are you the King James version? Read that verse again, verse 11. James chapter 5 and verse 11. Come on. Behold, we count them happy which endure. We count them happy which endure. Come on. Ye have heard of the patience of Job mm -hmm. and have seen the end of the Lord. Uh -huh. That the Lord is very pitiful mm -hmm. and of tender mercy. The Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Get Hebrews 12. Read verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, seeing we we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So it says, therefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Read. Let us lay aside every weight. Let us do what? Let us lay aside every weight Read. and the sin mm -hmm. which does so easily beset us. Come on. And let us run with patience. Just like Job did. Let us run with patience. Come on. The race that is set before us. Let us do what? Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Read. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Read. Who for the joy that was set before him. It says who, who for the joy that was set before him, knowing that once he go through everything, that it will be joy. He will overcome. He will be increased. The same way Job was increased. You understand? Who for the joy that was set before him, read. Endured the cross. He did what? Endured the cross. Read. Despising the shame. Uh -huh. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So guess what? We got to look to Job. We got to look to Christ. And understand that what? When we go through, what's going to happen? We're going to be increased in the end. All right? We're going to end it there. And... We're going to end it there. And then do we got any questions pertaining to the class? All right. We got all praise from Mosai. And then do we got any questions pertaining to the class?
All right, all praises. Any questions or anything that we went over today? Any any questions or anything that was brought out today that somebody's confused with? All right, if you got a question, just go ahead and post it. All glory to the Father. Was Job's wife sanctified because he was? Um, give me, uh, give me Ezekiel. Was Job's wife sanctified because he was? Give me Ezekiel 14 and I started verse then 14. So the question was, was Job's wife sanctified because he was? Ezekiel 14 and verse 14. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, mm -hmm. they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, mm -hmm. saith the Lord God. It says, though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, you understand? So it just mentioned three men who have memorials of righteousness. It says, though they were in it, meaning they were faithful before the Lord our God, it says they still can only deliver their own souls. All Job can do is be the example. Job was the example. But he cannot save her soul. You understand? She can save her own soul by following her husband's example. You understand? But the, the account that I read in the scriptures is that she spake as one of the foolish women spoke. Um, how do we deal with someone who exaggerates their trials uh best thing you can do um give me um uh tell them to uh get philippians 4 tell them to, tell them to meditate on this get philippians 4 read verse 8 philippians 4 verse 8 this is philippians chapter 4 verse 8 come on finally brethren mm -hmm. Whatsoever things are true, mm. whatsoever things are honest. It says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, come on. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are just, come on. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are pure, come on. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are lovely, come on. Whatsoever things are a good report. Whatsoever things are a good report, come on. If there be any virtue. If there be any virtue, meaning godliness, come on. And if there be any praise. If there be anything worthy of praise, come on. Think on these things. Think upon these things and guess what? Go a step further and speak upon these things. We don't need you to, to exaggerate your trials. The Bible says, think upon these things. And then out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. You understand? So how do I meditate on Philippians 4, 8 through 11? No, I'm, I'm, I'm an officer, not a captain. Appreciate you, though. Let me see. Um, okay, I'll pray. If you go through a trial and fail, then it's, it, it does not make you a part of the two thirds. You understand? What makes you a part of two? Give me Sirach 17 real quick. Sirach 17, let's read verse 25. If you go through a trial and fail, that's okay. You understand? You, you don't want to uh, fail in any trial. You understand? But when you go through trial and fail, that, that does not automatically put you in the lot of the two thirds. You understand? I'm sure what God said. Sirach 17, read verse 25. So rock 17, 25. Uh -huh. Return unto the Lord. The Bible says, guess what? If you go astray, if you fall, it says return to the Lord. Come on. Make that, excuse me, return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. It says return to the Lord and forsake thy sins. God don't want anybody to fall and then and then stay down. It says return to the Lord and forsake thy sins. Read. Make thy prayer before his face. Repent. Make thy prayer before his face and do what? And offend less. It says and offend less. You understand? So guess what? Be better tomorrow than you was today. Be better next week than you was this week. And a month from now, you shouldn't even be able, you shouldn't even be recognizable to who you were today. A year from a, a year from now, you should look at the strong woman that the Lord God has called you to be and look back at yourself like I, I don't know who that woman was. So guess what? As long as you got breath in your body, continue to endure. All praises to the Most High.
Does that include family members like some? Yes, Ezekiel 14, you can't save anybody. Can't save siblings, can't save anybody. Ezekiel 14, verse 14. Yeah, Satan is an angel. We read that earlier. Um, get Job 1 and 6 again. Satan is an angel. Job 1, verse 6. Uh -huh. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. A phrase for the angels is the sons of God. All right? So it says, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Come on. And Satan came also among them. Satan came also. Why? Because Satan is also an angel of God. So they are all in the heavens. You understand? Get, give me that real quick. You know what I want? Yeah. Verse 49. Give you another precept. They are all in the heavens with the Most High. And they are all obedient. There ain't no ruckus in the heavens. There ain't no loud noise. You understand? Psalm 78, read verse 49. Psalm 78, 49. Mm -hmm. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, right. wrath, and indignation and trouble mm -hmm. by sending evil angels among them. By doing what? By sending evil angels among them. So guess what? Good angels, evil angels, they are all in the heavens of the Most High. All right? So yeah, Satan is an angel. There are evil angels. You understand? And the Lord God dispatches them at his, at his pleasure. All right? How do you seek counsel if you live with a demon, a family member, without gossiping or exaggeration? All right, so the scriptures already told you. Um, give me, uh, give me Timothy two. No, give me Titus two. I'm sorry, Titus two. Titus two, and start at verse, uh, verse five. Start at four, read four and five. Titus two verse four. Yeah. Titus chapter 2, verse 4, mm. that they may teach the young women to be sober, mm. to love their husbands, to love their children, uh -huh. to be discreet. To be what? Discreet. It says to be what? Discreet. Discreet, meaning not telling everybody your business. Be discreet. Read on. Chaste. Chaste, meaning uh, keeping your legs closed. Read. Keepers at home. It says keepers at home. All right. So the Bible tells you have one council of a thousand. You understand? You, you try to go to your leadership that's above you. Give me that, uh, Sarah. About, uh, about counselors. So you can bring forth your issue, you understand, and just be discreet about it. You shouldn't be sitting there telling everybody your business in, in the midst of the congregation and bringing shame to your household because if, if, if it's, for example, um, a spouse, you don't, his shame is your shame. You, get, you, you in the congregation saying, oh, my husband is wicked. Okay. You speak about yourself when you do that. All right. You got that from me, Sirach? Yeah. Sirach, chapter 6 and verse, verse 6, right? Yeah, go ahead. Be in peace with many. Be in peace with many. Come on. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. Uh -huh. So it, it tells you to be discreet, and you can bring forth your issues and your concerns about things that are going on that's evil, but Maru, be discreet. Go to leadership, all right? And they will counsel you with the scriptures. Um, like, for example, it says, Because I measure and not above our power to endure them. How do we rationalize when something evil happens to one of our, our sisters? For example, Joy Morgan. Let's get Thessalonians. Let's get Thessalonians. We love our sister, and we pray our sister come home. And we're going to pray that she come home until we hear anything different. You understand? We mourn for that sister. Let's get... um. Read Thessalonians and read chapter uh, 4 and start at verse 13. Listen up, brother. First Thessalonians 4, 13. Read strong. Come on. But I would not have you to be ignorant, uh -huh. brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Now, in a situation that something ill has happened to her, and God forbid, you understand? Know but it says, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, for example. Read that ye sorrow not, mm -hmm. even as others which have no hope. So yeah, you we, we sorrow for our people if something uh, if something evil happens to them, like for example, the loss of life. But we don't sorrow in a situation as if we, there's no more hope for the sister. You understand? Read. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. If you really believe the teachings, if you really believe his Bible, if you really believe in Christ, read. Even so, them also which sleep in even Jesus. Even though them also which sleep, which are in fact sleep, read. Will God bring with him? It says God will bring them with him. Read on. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, mm -hmm. that 
we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord mm -hmm. shall not prevent them which are asleep. It says those of us who are, who are alive and remain, we shall not prevent them which are asleep. Read. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, mm -hmm. with the voice of an archangel, mm -hmm. and with the trump of God, mm -hmm. and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see that thing? Now, Lord willing, our sister is okay, but if she is not, you know what I'm saying, and God forbid, then we will not prevent her. The dead in Christ shall rise before us. You know what I'm saying? They shall rise first. But in the meanwhile, give me Thessalonians 5 and read verse 17. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Read. Pray without ceasing. What did the Bible say? Pray without ceasing. In the meanwhile, the Bible says pray without ceasing. You understand? Read. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Whatever is happening is the will of God in Christ concerning us, concerning each and every individual. That's the will of God concerning us. You understand? So right now, unfortunately, our sister is has a certain predicament, but that is the will of God concerning her. You understand? But our job is to pray without ceasing. Give, give me Romans 1 also. Give me Romans 1. Give me verse 9. The book of Romans, chapter 1, the ninth verse. Come on. For God is my witness. It says, God is my witness. Come on. Whom I serve with my spirit uh -huh. and the gospel of his son, uh -huh. that without ceasing, without what? Without ceasing, without ceasing, without quitting, without stopping, without giving up, without losing hope. Come on. I make mention of you always in my prayers. He says he Paul gave us an example to make mention of the of the body always in our prayers. So much the more for our sister. We love that sister. Hope you edified by that. The joke. Proverbs 30 and verse 5. The scripture don't say that it was a different woman. So one, one, one can only suggest that it was the same wife. You know what I'm saying? What I'm not going to do, you mean Proverbs 30? Proverbs 30, verse 5. Read. Every word of God is pure. Uh -huh. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Read. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. Add thou not unto his words. What did it say? Add thou not unto his words. Read. Lest he reprove you. Mm -hmm. And thou be found a liar. So as much as I would love for Job to have got another wife, the scriptures do not speak of such things. You understand? So I, it, one can only suggest that it was the same wife who spoke foolishly. You understand? Repentance is for us all. All right? All right. How do you deal when you fail your trial and slander comes with it while you are gone? Um, one thing you got to always remember, um, people will talk. <coughs> Give me Matthew 12. Matthew 12, read verse 36. Matthew 12, verse 36. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Remember this right here. Come on. But I say unto you mm -hmm. that every idle word that men every shall speak. Slander is a sentence filled with idle words. Slander is a sentence filled with idle words. Read that verse again. But I say unto you mm -hmm. that every idle word, every that, idle word, come on, that men shall speak, that men speak, read, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. They shall do what? They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You understand? So keep that in mind. You understand? We There is a God and no evil deeds shall go unpunished. Trying to make sure I don't skip over nothing. All praise it, sis. All right. Most high Christ bless you all, Israel. Let's stay in the spirit. Let's keep the Lord God commandments. All right. Let's stay cheerful. All right. When we go through it, understand that it will make the countenance better. All right. Shalom.
trying to make it so hard to serve God You why when I say that I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.